right, everyone, listen up. Ooh, this one's loud. Linden, Linden's like, turn this one up 50%. All right, listen up, everyone. We're, we're getting ready to read scripture. Please. Okay. We're going to read Numbers 10.10. 10. Numbers 10.10. 10, also on the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginning of your months, you shall blow with the trumpets over your ascending smoke offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahuwah Elohekim. Praise Yah. All right, let's start with some prayer. So as Numbers 10.10 says, we read that on every Shabbat, new moon, and feast day to go with our ascending smoke offering. So as we know, our prayers are our offerings today. Let's pray. Father Yahuwah, the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, we just come before you as an assembly and bless you, acknowledging that you are our Heavenly Father, creator of all, and that through your Son, Messiah Husha, everything was made in six days and on the seventh, you rested. And Father, we want to acknowledge that you are our master and that your Shabbat is a gift to man and to be observed. And through this, you mark us, Father, as your word says, you put a sign upon your people. Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh, would be amongst our congregation and guide us today as we study your word, as we fellowship, as we eat food and enjoy ourselves, Father, and rejoice in you and rejoice in your Son, to whom we know and we acknowledge as an assembly, none of us shall have salvation but by belief in your Son, Messiah Husha. And Father, we thank you for choosing us and bringing us out of the world to worship you the way you've commanded it, not the way men have commanded it, but the way you have commanded it, Father. Thank you. What a gift you've given us, the inheritance of Jacob as it's written, the Torah. Father, we love you. We bless you in Yahushua's mighty name. Amen. So what I wanted to talk about a little bit today is why he chose us. I often ask myself this question. Um, I've shared with you and I've shared it abroad online very, very boldly that um, I did not live a great life. The prodigal son story, I'm sure a lot of you all remember that. So I often ask myself, why did he allow me to see his truth, let alone even be worthy to teach it? I have no clue. All I know is that he is merciful and he is amazing. Amen? Amen. But I want to talk about something that uh, I've, been, I've been speaking upon very briefly the last couple weeks. Um, I mentioned it in our Testament of Joseph study, uh, our last week's Torah portion, and last night with the Testament of Benjamin about being the sons and daughters of his old age. And, I, and I'm not saying Yahuwah ages, okay? He's outside of time and space and all those things. But in the timeline of man... If we are truly at the end, are we kind of like Joseph and Benjamin being the sons and daughters of his old age? And if you would, turn to Genesis 37.3 real quick. We'll start there. And I want to share with you, while this is a very interesting time to be alive, um, just a crazy time to be alive, the darkness is so thick out there, evil is rampant. What is good is called evil. What is evil is called good. Everything is upside down. Everything that Yah loves, the world hates and is stomping upon. But I'm going to prove to you today that we're living in a blessed time regardless of all that. Genesis 37.3 says, Now Israel, of course this is Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children. Now, pause. We kind of asked the question, is it okay to have a favorite child? But not for today. But nevertheless, here's the facts. This is what the Torah says, that Joseph was loved more than all of his sons because why? He was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Uh, last night, we read the, uh, the Testament of Benjamin. Last week, um, we also read it before, that we remember that 
jo- uh, Jacob did not want Benjamin to go to Egypt, right? Because he's like, I lost Joseph already, my beloved son. Benjamin's all I have left. So he like had this extra special attention on Joseph and Benjamin, okay? And because why? They were both the sons of his old age. We read it last night in the Testament of Benjamin. It said also that Benjamin was the son of his old age as well. And I just want to pose the possible scenario that we are sons and daughters of his old age. And let's, let's do this together. If you would, turn to 2 Ezra chapter 5. Um, in case you're new, here online, uh, the book of 2 Ezra was included in the 1611 KJV uh, under the Apocrypha section, as well as the G- uh, 1599 Geneva and many other canons. This was considered scripture for a long time, uh, up until about 200 years ago. It was quoted by Messiah directly, verbatim, in 2 Ezra chapter 1. But we're going to do 2 Ezra 5, and I want to share a passage with you that's going to be talking about the last days and the people of the last days. And this is a very interesting passage. 2 Ezra chapter 5 reads this. Now, concerning the signs, he's talking, this is all about the whole context of this is Ezra is asking about what's going to happen in the future, prophecy, the last days. He says, now concerning the signs, behold, the days are coming when those who dwell on the earth shall be seized with great terror. Pause. What is the whole world selling today? Fear, fear, fear. And what's the whole world buying? Fear, fear, fear. So the whole earth shall be seized with great terror. And listen to this. And the way of truth shall be hidden. What's the way of truth? Is it not obscured from the masses? Is there but a a drop in the bucket that Yah has opened his eyes to the truth? Is this true now? Is the way of truth hidden from most people on the earth right now? I'd say so. And the land shall be barren of faith, and unrighteousness shall be increased beyond what you yourself see and beyond what you heard formerly. And the land which you now see ruling, that was ancient Babylon, shall be waste and untrodden. True, came true. And men shall see it desolate, came true. But the Most High grants, if, I'm sorry, but if the Most High grants that you live, you shall see it thrown into confusion after the third period. And the sun shall shut, the sun shall suddenly shine forth, that's a tongue twister, at, the, at night and the moon during the day. We learn about that in the Ascension of Isaiah, how, um, and also in the book of Enoch, how in the last days, the order of the sun, the moon, the stars will all be changed. And that's why the crops will fail. That's why there will be extreme famine. The winds will stop blowing. Basically, creation just stops. Now, verse 5 is interesting. Blood shall drip from wood, and the stone shall utter its voice. It's taken me five years for Yah to show me what this actually means. I believe this is talking about, about uh, the uh, Messiah on the cross. The blood, the, the, the wood shall drop blood, and the stone shall utter its voice. We know the Messiah is that stone which the builders rejected. The people shall be troubled, and the stars shall fall. And one shall reign whom those on the earth do not expect, and the birds shall fly away together. And listen to this. And the sea of Sodom shall cast up fish. I looked at this years ago when I was doing an uh, in-depth study on Second Ezra, and they found some traces of fish being in the, uh, in the Dead Sea, which, which is the sea of Sodom, which is kind of interesting. Um, And one whom many do not know shall make his voice heard by night and shall hear his voice. There shall be chaos also in many places, and fire shall often break out. Think about California and all these other crazy fires. And the wild beasts shall roam beyond their haunts, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Don't know about that one yet. And so, sorry, just to be honest with you. And salt water shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall conquer one another. Then shall reason hide itself, and wisdom shall withdraw into its chamber. And it shall be sought by many, but shall not be found. And unrighteousness and unrestraint shall increase on earth. And one country shall ask its neighbor, has righteousness or anyone who does right pass through you? And it will answer, no. And at that time, men shall hope, but not obtain. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. These are the signs which I permitted to tell you. And if you pray again and weep as you do now and fast for seven days, you shall hear yet greater things than these. 
This is Ezra. By the way, to Ezra, this is Ezra the prophet. Then I awoke, and my body shuddered violently, and my soul was troubled that it fainted. But the angel who had come to me and talked with me and held me and strengthened me and set me on my feet. Now on the second night, Faltiel, a chief of the people, came and said to me, Where have you been? And why is your face sad? Or do you not know that Israel has been entrusted to you in the land of their exile, Babylon? Rise, therefore, and eat some bread, so that you may not forsake us, like a shepherd who leaves his flock in the power of cruel wolves. Then I said to him, Depart from me, and do not come to me for seven days, and then you may come to me. He heard what I had said and left me. So I fasted seven days, mourned and weeping, as Uriel the angel had commanded me. And after seven days, the thoughts of my heart were grievous to me again. What's it there? Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse 22. And my soul received the spirit of understanding, and I began once more to speak words in the presence of the Most High. And I said, O oh, sovereign master, from every forest of the earth and from all its trees, you have chosen one vine. And from all the lands of the world, you have chosen for yourself one region. And from all the flowers of the world, you have chosen for yourself one one lily. And from all the depths of the sea, you have filled for yourself one river. And from all the cities that have been built, you have consecrated Zion for yourself. And from all the birds that have been created, you have named for yourself one dove. And from all the flocks that have been made, you have provided for yourself one sheep. And from all the multitude of the peoples, you have gotten for yourself one people. And to this people whom you have loved, you have given the Torah, which is approved by all. And now, O Yahuwah, why have you given over the one to many and dishonored the one root beyond the others and scattered your only one among the many? And those who opposed your promises have trodden down those who believed your covenants. If you do really hate your people, they should be punished at your own hands. When I had spoken these words, the angel who had come to me on a previous night was sent to me and said to me, listen to me and I will instruct you. Pay attention to me and I will tell you more. And I said, speak, my master. And he said to me, are you greatly disturbed in mind over Israel? Or do you love him more than his maker does? And I said, no, my master, but because of my grief I have spoken. For every hour I suffer agonies of heart while I strive to understand the way of the Most High and to search out a part of his judgment. He said to me, you cannot. And I said, why not, my master? Why then was I born? Or why did not my mother's womb become my grave that I might not see the travail of Jacob and the exhaustion of the people of Israel? And he said to me, count up for me those who have not yet come and gather for me the scattered raindrops and make the withered flowers to bloom again for me. Open to me the closed chambers and bring forth for me the winds that are shut up in them or show me the picture of a voice and then I will explain to you the travail that you asked to understand. So Ezra's whole thing, he was just complaining and lamenting about Israel's exile into Babylon. He said to me, verse 40, he said to me, just as you cannot do one of these things that were mentioned so you cannot discover my judgment or the goal of the love that I have promised my people. And I said, yet behold, and listen to this. <clears throat> this, is, this verse is where it gets really interesting, and this is the kind of the point I'm trying to make. Um, verse 41 says, and I said, yet behold, O Yahuwah, you do have charge over those who are alive at the end. In the Sefer version, someone double check me, I think it says, um, you do draw nigh to those who are alive at the end. Is that what it says? So there's a group of people in the end times who Yah is going to draw close to. And in this version, I'm reading of the RSV. I just, I like it. It reads a little easier for me. Um, in the RSV, he says, Yet behold, O Yahuwah, you do have charge. Charge is like um, having... Um, a protection over or a leadership over. And it's not like he didn't have leadership over the people over all the years, but there's something about the end time generation that Yah has his hand over these people. And again, the point I'm trying to make here is, are we sons and daughters of his old age? Now listen, let's keep going. So you do have charge over those who are yet alive at the end, but what will those do who are before us or we or those who come after us? He said, I shall liken my judgment to a circle. Just as for those who are last, there is no slowness. So for those who are first, there is no haste. Then I answered and said, could you not have created at one time those who have been and those who are and those who will be that you might show your judgment the sooner? 
He replied to me and said, The creation cannot make more haste than the creator. Neither can the world hold at one time those who have been created in it. And I said, How have you said to your servant that you will certainly give life at one time to your creation? That's the resurrection. If therefore all creatures will live at one time and the creation will sustain them, it might even now be able to support all them present at one time. He said to me, Ask a woman's womb and say to it, If you bear ten children, why one after another? Request it therefore to produce ten at one time. Ladies, what do you all think about that? Ten at one time? <laughs> I said, of course it cannot, but only each in its own time. He said to me, even so have I given the womb of the earth to those who from time to time are sown in it. For as an infant does not bring forth and a woman who has become old does not bring forth any longer, so have I organized the world which I created. Then I inquired and said, since you have now given me the opportunity, let me speak before you. Is our mother, of whom you have told me, still young, or is she now approaching old age? He replied to me, Ask a woman who bears children, and she will tell you. Say to her, Why are those whom you have borne recently not like those whom you bore before, but smaller in stature? And she herself will answer you, Those born in the strength of youth are different from those born in the time of old age when the womb is failing. Therefore, you also should consider that you and your contemporaries are smaller in stature than those who were before you. And those who come after you will be smaller than you, as born of a creation which already is aging and passing the strength of her youth. So here's my point. I'm, I get a little long-winded with Scripture. I like reading Scripture. My apologies. Sorry, but not sorry. Anyways, but the point is here, so does Yahuwah age? Does our Heavenly Father age? Probably not. But is the, as we read in, uh, in Ezra here, to, uh, to Ezra, the earth does age. And at the end, the people will be smaller in stature than people that were born before. This reminds me, let's go to Revelation 3. Let's go to Revelation 3. And I want to tie this in. Anybody here want to be a part of the Church of Philadelphia? Show of hands. Oh, yeah, a couple hands. All right, I do. I do. Let's go to Revelation 3. So remember... The children born at the end will be smaller in stature or smaller in strength, as it's written here. And again, the root of what I, what I wanted to talk about today is that Israel loved Joseph and Benjamin most because they were sons of his old age. Revelation 3, verse 7, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, and no man can shut it. Listen to this. For you have had little strength, and have kept my word, and has not denied my name. Pause there real quick. You look at that word strength. It's the same word used, given to the apostles, when uh, they were given the Holy Spirit and it said they had great power and they went out and Peter's shadow healed people and, you know, uh, Paul had the handkerchiefs and they were laying hands on people. And so that was the great strength. Well, it says here there's a people that have little strength. And I just wonder if it's the people in the last days that have, don't have that same massive power that those apostles were given. Now, don't get me wrong. Is there power still today? Can we heal the name of Yahushua? Absolutely. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we're born into a world where everything's against us. The darkness is prevailing over the whole world. However, he's lighting up a light, a torch in the midst of this darkness to stand and say, you know what? I don't want to go that way anymore. I don't want to buy into what Hollywood is selling or these TV shows or what mainstream science is teaching. I want to go with what Yahuwah says. I want to follow his ways. And so we be those torchbearers that maybe, just maybe, we have that little strength. But what still, we kept his word. Because I tell you what, this world, all, all the uh, distractions are out there, are they not? Almost every reason to not believe and do as we will, do as thou wilt, as Satanism says, every reason is out there at your fingertips, is it not? But there's a group of people that are saying, I don't want it. I want nothing to do with it. And that's what he says here. You have had little strength, but have kept my word and has not denied my name, even though the world sells you everything and every reason to not do that, to not go his way. Even modern-day religion, 
mainstream Christianity, Judaism. I'm not judging people. I'm just saying even modern-day religion is going away from his ways. And you're not, he's, he's waking up people that say, I don't want anything to do with that. Verse 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before my, your, your feet and to know that I have loved you. Be, listen, because you have kept the word of my patience, which keeping the word of his patience denotes action, that we're doing something, right? Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation or trial or tribulation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Make no mistake, that is the great tribulation. And there is a group of people that are going to be ready at his coming, that he's going to say, come on, you made yourself ready. But these other people that didn't, I'm going to try them hard. And there are a lot of people that are going to turn, but it's going to hurt. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no man take your crown. Him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my Elohim, and, she, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my Elohim, and I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the assemblies. Let's go to John 15. Let's go to John 15, and let's see who his people are in these last days. And we'll see, after we've identified these people who are, who, what their characteristics are like, what he has in store for them in the last days, if we truly are the sons and daughters of his old age. John 15 says this, I am the true vine. This is Messiah speaking, of course. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman, or gardener. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. You want to know what the fruit is? See Psalm 1, 1 through 3, and see Galatians 5 with the fruit of the Spirit. Spirit and truth. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you, except you abide in me. Keep all the Torah you want. You're not a Messiah. You're out. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. nothing. At least nothing that he wants, right? If a man abides or a man doesn't live in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Isaiah 66 says, the slain or the burnt of Yahweh will be many. If you abide or if you live in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. And again, Psalm 1 tells us the person who delights in his Torah and meditates in his Torah day and night, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The wicked are not so, but like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For Yahuwah knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the sinners shall perish. Verse 9, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Now here, let's define love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. And how do we define that love? It's his commandments. Because if there is no instruction or definition of what that love is, it's everything and it's nothing and it means nothing. So how we get that definition is by the Torah, by the commandments. Hallelujah. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Check. All right. I got it. <laughs> Let's do that. Henceforth, I call you not servants, but the servant knows not what his master does. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Now listen to this. Chosen. Are we the chosen sons and daughters, right? You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, 
that your fruit should remain, and whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. And that is what's amazing to me, is why on earth am I here, or are you here, or anyone across the four corners of the earth that are coming out of traditions of men, or even lawlessness, or atheism, whatever? How on earth is this happening, that out of nowhere, seemingly, that people are waking up and wanting to walk in spirit and truth according to what our Messiah taught? How is that? It's because he's choosing people. He's picking people. And that's what's amazing. And it's greater than any, than any gift this world can offer. I assure you. And I know most of you are nodding your head like I know. I've experienced it. I've experienced almost everything that we're, the earth has to offer. And I tell you, it's worthless. It's meaningless. It's empty in here. You might have stuff and all these different things. I talked about it last week. My previous life, I did whatever I wanted to. My day-to-day -day life, day -day life was easy but it was hard in here. My daily life was hard inside. And now my life is harder, and I love it. Because I have this hope inside that nothing can take away. Right, Tony? Nothing can take that away. Go to Isaiah 27, please. So are we his vineyard or not? Those who have Messiah and keep the commandments are his vineyard. Now let's talk... Let's look at a passage written in the book of Isaiah 27 where he prophesies what he's going to do for his vineyard in the last days. Now, he likens his people to many different things. Chicks under a hen's wing, cubs, trees, but often a vine, a vineyard. Isaiah 27. It says, in that day, this is talking about the day of Yahuwah, when everything changes and the time's up. In that day, Yahuwah, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent, even Leviathan, that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Who's the dragon? Satan. Satan. That's the dragon. What's the sea? Nations. Multitudes peoples that he's going to be ruling over. Actually, he does now. <laughs> in that day, listen to this. No, now let's get to us. In that day, sing ye unto her a vineyard of red wine. Listen to this. This is Yah speaking. I, Yahweh, do keep it. Remember, he's the gardener. I do keep it. I water it every moment, lest any hurt it. I will keep it night and day. That's his promise to his people. That's his promise to his sons and daughters of his old age. Fury is not in me. Who would set the briars and the thorns against me in, in battle? Who are the thorns and briars? People that do not bring forth fruit. They're fruitless plants. I would go through them. I would burn them together. Or let him take hold of my strength that he may make peace with me. And he shall make peace with me. He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face of the world with fruit. That is a parable for people coming back to his Torah in these last days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Esdras 2. We'll go back to 2 Esdras again. And this is a passage I have read probably over 100 times for you and online, and I won't stop reading it. This is the missing... If anybody here has ever been interested in who the 144,000 are or the great multitude or what's different about them... This is the puzzle piece that's been missing for centuries, and here it is. Been tucked away in, a, in the Apocrypha in 2 Ezra. And we're going to, I know most of you know it, but there's new people that Yah is waking up every single day, which is such an, such an incredible thing that Yah is doing. Um, so just in case if there's a, is a possibility that one person hasn't heard this yet, I want to read this again because it describes exactly what these people are doing and why Yah has chosen them. To Esdras 2.33. Second Esdras 2.33. I, Ezra, received a command from Yahuwah on Mount Horeb to go to Israel. And when I came to them, they rejected me and refused Yahuwah's commandment. Obviously a foreshadow of them rejecting Messiah, which most of them still do today. Therefore, I say to you, O nations that hear and understand, await your shepherd. He will give you everlasting rest. Because he who will come at the end of the age is close at hand. Be ready for the rewards of the kingdom, because the eternal light will shine upon you forevermore. Listen to this. 
Flee from the shadow of this age. That's the darkness. That's what I was telling you. We're living in an age where darkness is prevailing over the entire earth. In a spiritual sense, it's the darkest I think it's ever been. So flee from the shadow of this age, the darkness of this age. Receive the joy of your glory. I publicly call on my Savior to witness. Receive what Yahuwah has entrusted to you. And what has he entrusted to us? The true riches. This isn't talking about money. It's not talking about gold or silver possessions. What are the true riches of this world? Pro Book of Proverbs. Wisdom. If we search for wisdom as people search for treasure, we will be filled. Just like Messiah says, he who searches for righteousness or thirsts and hungers after righteousness shall be filled. Okay. So receive what Yahuwah has entrusted to you. It's like the parable of the talents, what he's given you. And be joyful, giving thanks to him who has called you to heavenly kingdoms. Rise and stand and see at the feast of Yahuwah the number of those who have been sealed. That's 144,000 uh, uh, talk right there. Those who have departed from the shadow or the darkness of this age have received glorious garments from the master. Take again your full number, O Zion, and conclude the list of your people who are clothed in white, who have fulfilled the Torah of Yahuwah. And as we know, Messiah summed everything up in two commandments, loving him, Yahuwah, with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and loving people. And then, praise Yah, he's given us better definition of what that looks like. Breaks down to the Ten Commandments, how we actually love him and love people. And then, of course, the rest of the Torah breaks that down into more individual scenarios of telling us how to do what and how to please him. So those who have fulfilled the Torah of Yahuwah, the number of your children whom you desired is full. Beseech Yahuwah's power that your people who have been called from the beginning may be made holy. He knew the end from the beginning. He knew his sons and daughters at the end from the very beginning. My, just a thought. When he says the first shall be last and the last shall be first, thinking about this puts a whole new meaning in my mind, but that's just my opinion. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion, this is verse 42, on Mount Zion, a great multitude which I could not number, and they were all praising Yahweh with songs. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others, and on the head of each of them he placed a crown, but he was more exalted than they. It's Messiah, of course. And how I was held speechless. Then I asked the angel, who are these, my master? He answered to me and said, these are they who have put off the mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and they have confessed the name of Elohim, and now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, who is that young man who places crowns on them and puts palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, he is the son of Elohim who they confessed in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of Yahuwah. So these people fled from the darkness of this world. They confessed Messiah. They walked in Torah. And they stood valiantly for his name. Hallelujah. All right. Almost done here. So let's go to last chapter we're going to read, Isaiah 65. And again, so am I answering the question, why did he choose us? I still don't know. I really don't know. I just have a sneaking suspicion that there was a time in your life where you made a decision, and he looked over it, and he was like, okay. I'm going to give you a shot. Or maybe he looked in your heart, even though you may have been walking with the world or walking with religion, maybe he just maybe just saw your heart and was like, I'm going to open their eyes and see what they do with it. Because I've seen him open people's eyes and see what they do with it. And they, well, it's the parable of the sower, right? Some people get offended at persecution. Some people get choked up by the riches of the world and they fall away. Why did he choose us? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. Knowing what we know, our Heavenly Father, that he sent his Son, and that through belief in him, we're able to have repentance and forgiveness and baptism and receiving the Holy Spirit, and to walk as he walked according to the commandments, that's a gift. That's something that we should be thanking him for every single day. Thank you for choosing me. Why you did, I don't know. I could tell you, I feel very unworthy to be able to do these things, to walk in his ways, let alone teach it. We should be appreciative that he chose us. And why he did, I don't know. But thank him for it every day. Isaiah 65. 
I am sought of them that ask not for me. Right here. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Listen to this. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walks in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. A people that provokes me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifices in gardens and burns incense upon bricks, which remain among the graves and lodge in monuments. That's necromancy stuff, Kabbalah garbage, which eat pig, pork, in which the broth of abominable things in their vessels which say, stand by yourself, come not near me, for I am holier than you. These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burns all the day. So pause there real quick. Think about this. For so long, he reached out to Israel, keep my ways. He sent prophets, keep my ways, and you will dwell here forever. Just keep my ways, and you'll live, and you'll prosper. And they wouldn't do it. Now, here's a people out of nowhere that's like, we want to do your stuff. We want to walk in your ways. We want to keep your Shabbat in the midst of a world full of darkness. That's why I believe the Father may have just a little extra love for the sons and daughters of his old age. Because there's a people, they're like, I want to do it. He's given us that circumcised heart that's we're like, we want to keep your ways. We thirst for it. Show me your word. Open it to me so I can keep it. And we had people all those years that wouldn't do it even though they had everything in front of them. Verse 6, Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, says Yahweh, which have burned incense upon the mountains and have blasphemed me upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus says Yahweh, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Destroy it not. For a blessing is in it, so will I do for my servants' sakes, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, Messiah, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there, and Sharon shall be a fold of the flocks, and the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But you are they that forsake Yahuwah, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, or the word there is Gad or God, that furnish the drink offering unto that number or fortune or destiny. Des uh, yeah, destiny. Therefore, I will number you to the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, you did not answer. When I spake, you did not hear, but did evil before my eyes and chose that wherein I delighted not. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, Behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for the vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for Yahweh Elohim shall, say, shall slay you and call his servants by another name. And that he who blesses himself on the earth shall bless himself in the Elohim of truth. He's the Elohim of the Torah. He gave us his ways and his statutes through his Torah. He's like, you want to know me? This is how you draw near to me. And he that swears in the earth shall swear by the Elohim of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten. And because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem, or New Jerusalem, a rejoicing, and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in New Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. This is the goal, you all. This is the reign of Messiah. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die in hundred years old, but the sinner being in hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall, listen to this, there'll be no more oppression. The oppression of all these things surrounding us, it'll be gone. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat it. 
For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of Yahuwah, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. And they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says Yahuwah. So are we his sons and daughters of his old age? I think so. I do. Does he have special favor on a people coming out of the darkness into his light? I do think so. Praise be to Yah. And what's the moral of this story? Thank him every day with all your heart. Maybe give it to him with a little extra prayer. It may not be prayer time. It's not about how long you pray. A lot of people like to boast, I pray all day. I pray for 10 hours straight. What's the content of your prayer? Are you just asking things for yourself? Are you praying for other people? Are you thanking him? Are you getting on your knees and saying, thank you. Thank you so much. Why you called me, I don't know. But all I can do is thank you and call you merciful. Maybe spend a little more time in his word. Maybe draw closer to him than you ever have before. Because guess what? He deserves it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's arise. Who's going to come dance over here with me? Who's going to come over here and dance like David with me? Mitch? Not Mitch. <laughs> Mitch. Okay. Like, nope. I totally called you. I'm not taking out my phone. All right, everybody. Woo, it's pretty hot. Hey. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yes, yeah. Uh, for those of you who do not know us, uh, we're Lyndon and Ruth, Mitchell, um, and Asaf is in the back. Uh, and uh, we have a ministry online called Left and Right Ministries. And uh, you can go ch- check out, actually, the new song we just posted yesterday uh, it was Psalm, uh, it was Isaiah 65. So be glad and rejoice. Uh, literally, he, he read the, the exact verse that we uh, sang yesterday, so you can go check our new video out. Uh, but I think I just felt called, it kind of felt this, this push to do this song um, that we haven't done in a while, O Israel, the call of, of those who are Israel, his people, we are to lay down our idols and follow him with all of our being. Amen? Amen. We're to surrender to him. And honor him with our lives to keep his commandments and to love Yahuwah with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. So let us us come before him and ask him, Father, if there is any idols in our lives, reveal them to us now as we worship, as we pray, as we dance. Father, let us sing and rejoice in you always. But please, Father, reveal to us now any idols that are in our hearts, anything that we need to let go of. May we surrender to you. And may we come before your holy mountain and bow before you and your great and awesome splendor, and worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. There is a wrestling in our soul. Belongs to know our great atone As we wander in the wilderness We lift our cry up to receive His rest Oh, who is our Elohim? Oh, His voice is calling Oh, He is right There is a wrestling in our soul 
but also know our greater dawn as we wander in the wilderness we lift our cry up to receive his rest oh who is our Elohim oh his voice is calling let me hear you sing it out come on oh his right Behold how good and how pleasing it is for us to dwell together in unity, for us to dwell in harmony. That's what we were talking about just earlier. We have come here. We've been called. Who knows why? We're here. We're here for the purpose of worshiping him with all of our lives. And how good it is for us to be here. Oh, man. Yah has been merciful to us. Amen.
Playing a kick. Whew. It's a lot of reverb. Hello. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. <laughs> yeah, Shabbat shalom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this next song is gonna make me a little tired because it's it's a lot of energy. So yeah. we're gonna need all of your energy. <laughs> yeah, that's my strength. Thank you. Prepare the way, all these people may straight about For Yeshua's coming back, so we lift up as one mighty voice Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah Prepare the way, all these people may straight about For Yeshua's coming back, so we lift up as one mighty voice Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah. For he's coming in the clouds with his glory renowned. 
make a path for him. He'll be cunning like the sun with the sword on his tongue. He is calling us in, so be ready. Oh, Yeshua is coming again. the way all his people make straight a path for Yeshua's coming back so he lifts up as one mighty voice Hosanna hallelujah Hosanna hallelujah for he's coming in the clouds with his glory renown make a path for him He'll be shining like the sun with the sword on his tongue. He is calling us in, so be ready. For Yeshua is coming again. The Son of Man who died for our sins was raised to life and he's coming again. So prepare the way, oh people of y'all, let us not delay. The shepherd is called, oh the Son of Man who died for our sins was raised to life and he's coming again. So prepare the way, oh people of y'all, let us not delay. The shepherd is called, oh the Son of Man. We talk for our sins, was raised to life, and he's coming again. So prepare the way, oh people of Yahweh, let us not delay. The shepherd is called, oh the son of man. We talk for our sins, was raised to life, and he's coming again. So prepare the way, oh people of Yahweh, let us not delay. The shepherd is called. For he's coming in the clouds with his glory renown. Make a path for him. And he'll be shining like the sun with the sword on his tongue. He is calling us in. Oh, he's coming in the clouds with his glory renown. Make a path for him. He'll be shining like the sun with the sword on his tongue. He is calling so be ready, for Yeshua is coming again. He's coming again. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. We're going to slow down just a little bit. Psalm 121, I think, is a very powerful psalm. All the psalms are powerful, but this one is, I just love the, the, the lyrics of this one. You know, saying, I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from Yahuwah, right? The maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes to the hills, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Yahuwah who made heaven and I lift my eyes to the hills, from where does my help come?
your shade at your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. For Yahuwah will surely protect you. Yeah. So we have kind of a surprise, surprise song. It may or may not be one of yours. I just, this is a song that Adam created that I really love, and I decided to make my, my, my own version. Hey, you've done Psalm 3. Come on. Thank you. 
looked after for he has looked after me for he has looked after me for he has looked after me You can sing that anytime. <laughs> Full permission. Praise you. Um, so I had a request today that um, we do 